Hey guys, in a previous video, I said we wanted to put together one on wet aging venison. So time has come and we're gonna do that today. Well, first thing I must say, I am not a food scientist. So everything I'm gonna say in this video is what I have garnered from reading and sources online, as well as from personal experience here on the farm over several, well, and even before we were on the farm for many, many years back. First things first, why age meat in the first place? Well, one thing I will say is, is that most of the meat you buy in the grocery store has been aged to some extent. So chicken, it might be only one or two days. Pork, it could be a week or so. Uh, and then beef can be aged anywhere from three to six weeks for wet aging and up to 20 plus weeks for dry aging, but that's a whole other subject. So venison falls somewhere between pork and beef, uh, as a, especially as a red meat and an animal that is also out certainly free ranging and running. So most sources, places will tell you that you should wet age venison between seven and 14 days. So let's get to the science of understanding aging beef and why we do it. Inside of muscle tissue or in mammals, the most prevalent protein is collagen, which is a long, stiff protein made up of three molecules, amino acids, that are twisted around each other like a rope. And the more collagen that you have in meat and when you cook it, uh, the tougher it will be, the harder it will be to cut, and the harder it will be to chew. So um, the younger uh, an animal is, the less collagen it has. Uh, the older it is, the more it has. Uh, the less work it has to do, again, the less there is. The more it's using its muscles, the more there is. So when we uh, harvest an animal, and what a lot of people I know, deer hunters, uh, and myself included, some time ago would do is that we would process the meat and immediately put it into the freezer. Now, in some cases, depending on how fast they've done that, that's really bad because rigor mortis is still an issue uh, and uh, in the meat, and that is definitely gonna affect both the taste and the tenderness of the meat. So this is why we age, we should age meat. And what happens is that the enzymes, these natural enzymes, go in and start to break down the collagen in the muscle fibers. But we have to obviously keep the meat uh, from, protect the meat from spoiling. So we do this by keeping it in a space refrigerator between 34 and 40 degrees. So not more than 40, not less than 34. If you get down to freezing, the enzymes no longer are able to function. They'll be frozen, they stop this process. Uh, and after 40 degrees, you're gonna risk spoilage. For us, we keep it in a refrigerator, an extra refrigerator in our shop. We keep it right at 34 degrees. And this is a refrigerator that we're not going in and out of, which is why I would not recommend doing this in, let's say, the refrigerator in your home where people are going in and getting drinks and other things out of it, and the temperature is fluctuating in the refrigerator and not staying at a constant temperature. We've already been into the bag, open it up. Uh, a couple of things I wanna say about that. Now, one is that you may pick up a slight odor, and we've uh, noticed that every time that we have done this and aged, wet aged the meat, uh, is that, and, and my sense is, that is just some of the bloods around the meat or in the bag, but the meat itself is fine, and when we get in and process it and cut it, it smells perfect, uh, perfectly fine, and just as, as, just as it did when we put it into the refrigerator. A second thing that uh, it, you'll, you will notice when you pull this out, obviously put the meat in and everything was very red and fresh, is that you will have some browning of some of the meat. Now, just like in the grocery store, uh, browned meat is not a sign of bad meat or meat that has gone bad. There are other proteins in red meat called myoglobins. This is the way oxygen gets into the muscle. When we cut uh, meat and expose it to oxygen, that's when we get the really red, rich red meats, and that's called oxymyoglobin, when there is a super oxygenated myoglobin. 
But once meat has been deprived of oxygen for some length of time, it's going to start browning. And that's metmyoglobin uh, is, is, again, kind of an easy way to think of it is, is an oxygenation or um, oxidation process that it's losing oxygen and starting to brown. But again, I want to stress this is not meat that has gone bad. It does not affect the flavor. It just doesn't have oxygen anymore. So don't be freaked out by that if you wet age your venison and pull it out and some of the surface of it has turned a little bit brown in some places. The meat is fine. All right, so we're gonna pull out a back strap and just go ahead and clean it up, clean off all the silver skin, little bits of uh, fat and other things that are on that and then we'll come back and finish up this video. <laughs> All right, we went ahead and cleaned up both back straps and the tenderloins. And just to show you what an absolutely beautiful cut of meat this is, super tender. And uh, this will be, well, I can't wait, to, can't wait to get it on the grill. One other little thing that I will say is that a lot of sites will talk about vacuum sealing your meat in the refrigerator during the wet aging process. And, you know, I guess I could see the benefits of that. We don't have a, a vacuum sealer. And we have been doing this for years of just double bagging it in these contractor bags, uh, trying to get out all the air and putting it in the refrigerator and have had no issues. So in my humble opinion, don't need to vacuum seal it and doesn't seem to make any difference uh, in, in the meat. And we haven't lost any meat. It's never gone, gone bad as a result of not being vacuum sealed. Uh, just you know a big part of this for us is is beyond the hunt itself and being out an opportunity to be out into nature and uh, really then the blessing to be able to harvest uh, an animal uh, all of that the whole story of it and doing this ourselves knowing where it came from and what we're putting on the table for family and friends uh, it's just it's a the, the whole part of this is just a really a blessing I wanted to share two stories uh, about about at the end of this about wet aging and uh, one how I came to learn about it and then uh, a, a funny story about someone who said they were very opposed to didn't like venison so the first is we were had a really a privilege to go to a restaurant in Raleigh North Carolina it's about 30 40 minutes from us called the Angus barn and the executive chef there is a gentleman named Walter Royal and he has some fame uh, in that he was on Iron Chef America and as I understand it to date he was the highest point earning chef on uh, Iron Chef America and so we were we really uh, had this terrific opportunity to go and they have a kitchen a teaching kitchen there and a separate dining room and we went with a number of friends and we're able to watch him cook dinner and talk about cooking a meal. I have to say, you know, he'd obviously done this a lot of times. And so I don't know that his enthusiasm was all there of the, the typical, well, sort of dog and pony show that he was happy to do. But we were talking, I was kind of making small talk and, and asked him about cooking venison specifically or any tips or tricks on, on venison. And at that point, he, he lit up a little bit, got kind of excited because I think it's something he doesn't normally uh, get to discuss with people that are there. And uh, he, he said that the biggest thing about venison, and he is a hunter, he, and he's from originally, I believe, Alabama. Uh, he loves venison. And he said the biggest thing is aging your venison. And, uh, and for in his case, Obviously, he's got more money than we do as executive chef there. Uh, he has a, his own walk-in cooler at his house. So he hangs, and I'm assuming then dry ages, his venison. Uh, but he talked about then this idea of when I said, well, I don't have a, a walk-in cooler. He says, well, you, what, you can wet age it at least. And so that's how this whole process comes about for us is really in thanks to him of planting that seed and then me going and doing a lot of research. And it really has changed the way that we, we process venison and also uh, how much more we enjoy it because of the flavor and the tenderness. And that's the second story is that we had some friends uh, who were coming over from dinner for dinner and, and from previous conversations knew that the wife was adamantly opposed to eating venison and said she had had it once and it was it was terrible it was awful she said it was super tough 
Uh, she didn't like the taste, uh, everything about it, and she would never eat venison again. Well, we had them over and uh, we <laughs> prepared, I wanted to give this a shot and prepare venison again. So we actually had back straps that we had marinated and grilled and we were out walking around on the farm and talking and I let her husband know, hey, FYI, we're having venison for dinner, which he was really excited about, but then was sort of nervous about uh, his, his wife. Well, we're in well into dinner. Uh, everybody is inhaling the food uh, and really going through the venison very, very quickly. And uh, the husband and I at that point were talking about venison and his wife sort of gets wise at some point, starts to put it together and says, hey, wait a minute, are we eating, is this venison? And I uh, kind of smiled, he laughed, said, well, yes, actually it is. And then she just raged. She's like, oh my gosh, this is so good. This is so delicious. And then like nothing, tastes nothing like what I had had before. And uh, everybody at the table, including her kids, some of whom had been, I, I would argue, a little prejudiced by their mother's view of venison, there wasn't a piece left on the table when the meal was done. And they, uh, everybody really inhaled it. And she said it was just so tender and so good, so delicious. That's wet aging, uh, in my experience. That's what it does for your meat and why we're big proponents of it, why we wanted to make this video and share it with others. All right, that's it. Again, let me just say at the end, not a food scientist. Uh, most of everything I have said in here is from what we have picked up in reading and research and our own personal experience. But I hope it's helpful to somebody out there that wants, in my opinion, again, better more tender and flavorful venison to put on the table for family and friends. Thanks for watching and until the next video from here at St. Isidore's Farm, take care and God bless. What are you doing, crazy chicken? Huh? <laughs> she just flew up. I was just standing here and she just flew up on my shoulders and landed on my shoulder. Hey, what you doing? Huh? Trying to eat my buttons. Girl, that's not food. <laughs>